Summary of the 19 Basic Principles of a Theophanocratic Political Theory and Expanded Principles of Theophanocratic Political Theory. Number one, a theosophic-centered perspective on the human subject and therefore human rights, wherein metaphysics and ontology are determining discursive context and subtext in politics and law to all discussions of humanicity, meaning the quality or condition of being human. This would entail an axiomatic recognition of the facticity of the living spirit as the one in the many, the transcendent who is imminent in all things. Given this, as with everything else, a given society in its individual as well as its collective components should be looked upon as the theophanic self-disclosure of this living spirit wherein all things are manifestations of the names and attributes of it, hence theophanocracy the rule of theophanies. Discussions of class, race, gender, and related would necessarily fall under the rubric of such theosophocentric, theophanological, and esoteric contexts and considerations. At foundation, and with the recognition that universal being holds within itself infinite articulations and levels, this principle holds that all of the created universe, and not just humans, are equal before their creator, since being slash existence is the paradigmatic facticity to all things at the very core ontological level itself. Number two, a base to superstructure, grassroots to society, individual to collective perspective regarding all human polity. This denotes the sovereignty of the individual as a theomorphic reality and the sovereignty of the family as a sacred institution, however family be defined, constitute the basic building blocks to any viable polity, since from these two foundational social configurations is any genuine society ever built. Number three, the rejection of McKinderian Duganist geopolitics with its Manichaean geopolitical perspectives in favor of hybrid green Marxian and similar forms of sociological slash economic analysis regarding international relations, economics, and politics. Number four, rejection of elitist bourgeois globalism as well as statist nationalism with their capitalism and instead the embrace of an internationalist indigenism of common people with the adoption of green degrowth anarcho-communist perspectives. Number five, embrace of science and technology and not its rejection, so long as such science and technology remains in every conceivable way ecologically sustainable, well simultaneously safe and neutral in all forms and contexts, in the short and long term, otherwise it should be rejected. Number six, Embrace of the Temporary Autonomous Zone, TAZ, as a legitimate form of individual and collective political activism. Number seven, the collectivization of the four elements, air, fire, water, and earth, per the 11th gate of the ninth unity of the Bayan, with the global prohibition of the buying and selling, the trade and commodification therein, and the total abolition of the current system of money, banking, exchange, and finance. Number eight, degrowth and deindustrialization on a planetary level in order to reverse two centuries of ecological devastation. Number nine, localization and global decentralization, whether in trade and commerce, in politics, or social formations. Number 10, permaculture and ecological rewilding as, de as green degrowth economic models. Number 11, class war against all elites, given that ecocide, being an intrinsic element of capitalism and a crime against existence, is itself elite warfare against the human, genic, animal, vegetable, and mineral worlds. Number 12, the complete elimination of global wealth disparities via the seizure of all the means of production. Number 13, rejection of Eurocentrism and white supremacy in all forms and iterations 
together with the rejection of bourgeois liberalism. Number 14, feminocentrism and matriarchy with the permanent overthrow of patriarchy globally. Number 15, radical democratic decentralism and syndicalism as viable administrative models with the wholesale rejection of all authoritarian formations. Number 16, the harmony between the metacosmic, mesocosmic, macrocosmic and microcosmic universes as a single ontological block without fissure, and so the rejection of the fallacious Western modernist, materialist, positivist perspective on the world. Number 17, rejection of religious literalism and the destructive narrow-mindedness of the exoteric Abrahamic traditions, i.e. institutionalized Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, with the adoption of pluralistic, esoteric, and metaphysically based perspectives on religion, i.e. the Corbinian Harmonia Abrahamica, as well as related standpoints. Number 18 radical and holistic pedagogical methods of education and the rejection of current methods and models. Number 19, the complete dismantling of the contemporary corporatist neoliberal capitalist paradigm from the north to the south poles as representing the embodied system of the Antichrist. All of these principles are open to expansion, augmentation and debate but if Alexander Dugan has claimed his own largely contradictory and extremely dangerous fascistic meanderings as a fourth political theory, we hereby proclaim theophanocracy as the fifth political theory superseding it. The expanded principles of theophanocratic political theory. Number one, theosophic-centered human subjectivity. Humanity must be understood not only through socio-political or materialist lenses, but through metaphysical and ontological perspectives that recognize the living spirit as their unifying reality within diversity. This transcendent imminence renders all beings as manifestations of divine names and attributes. Therefore, societies must be structured to reflect this divine self-disclosure, or theophany. Application. Laws and policies must treat all beings, not just humans, as equal participants in the sacred order. This impacts rights discussions, challenging anthropocentrism, and introducing an ontological equality that transcends class, race, and gender. Grassroots sovereignty. Number two. The individual as a theomorphic reality and the family as a sacred nucleus are foundational. Sovereignty flows from the base, individual and familial units, to the superstructure, societal and political organizations. Application. Policies should prioritize community-level governance, respecting familiar configurations while rejecting top-down impositions that undermine grassroots agency. Number three, geopol geopolitical reorientation. Rejecting the binary geopolitics of Mackinder and Dugan, Theophanocracy advocates for a green Marxian analysis that emphasizes ecological, sociological, and economic justice on a planetary scale. Application. Develop policies that transcend nationalistic power struggles, fostering cooperative internationalism rooted in ecological and social well-being. Number four. Internationalist indigenism. Rejecting elitist globalism and statist nationalism, theophanocracy promotes an international alliance of common people grounded in green degrowth and anarcho-communist principles. Application. Support movements that uplift indigenous knowledge, communal ownership and sustainable practices while dismantling capitalist exploitation. Number five. Sustainable science and technology. Science and technology must align with ecological sustainability and long-term safety. Anything that jeopardizes the environment or perpetuates harm must be rejected. Application. Invest in green technologies, enforce strict ecological assessments, and halt projects with unsustainable outcomes. 
Number six, the temporary autonomous zones, or TAZ. The TAZ represents a legitimate model of resistance and experimentation, enabling spaces where individuals and collectives can live freely from oppressive structures. Application. Encourage decentralized grassroots movements to establish autonomous spaces as laboratories of freedom and innovation. Number seven, collectivization of the four elements. Air, fire, water, and earth belong to all beings and cannot be commodified. The prohibition of trade and finance systems that exploit these elements is essential. Application. Enact global treatise, treatises banning the privatization of natural resources and transition away from monetary systems that perpetuate exploitation. Number eight, degrowth and deindustrialization. Reverse the ecological devastation caused by industrial capitalism by embracing planetary degrowth. Application, implement policies for scaling down industrial activity prioritizing local economies and reducing energy consumption while fostering ecological regeneration. Number nine, localization and decentralization. Centralized systems in trade, commerce, and governance create dependency and exploitation. Localization fosters resilience and sustainability. Application, support local economies, decentralized energy grids, and political structures to empower communities. Number 10, permaculture and rewilding. Adopt permaculture and ecological rewilding as economic models to restore planetary balance. Application, incentivize sustainable farming, reforestation and habitat restoration, replacing extractive industries with regenerative practices. Number 11, class war against elites. Elites perpetuate ecocide and exploit all realms of existence. Combating them is essential to theophanocracy. Application. Organize grassroots movements to redistribute wealth and dismantle elite power structures. Number 12. Eliminating wealth disparities. Seizing the means of production and redistributing wealth addresses global inequities. Application. Implement policies for wealth redistribution worker cooperatives, and socialized resources. Number 13, anti-Eurocentrism and anti-white supremacy. Reject all forms of racial supremacy and Eurocentric epistemologies while fostering a pluralistic worldview. Application, promote cultural equity, revise educational curricula, and dismantle systemic racism. Number 14, feminocentrism and matriarchy. Patriarchy is a source of systemic violence. It over, its overthrow and the promotion of matriarchal values are key to liberation. Application. Support policies that empower women, protect feminine wisdom traditions, and create gender equitable structures. Number 15. Radical democratic decentralism. Reject authoritarianism in all forms, favoring syndicalist models of cooperative governance. Application. Develop democratic cooperatives and self-managed councils as alternatives to hierarchical systems. Number 16. Cosmic harmony. Recognize the unity of the metacosmic, mesocosmic, macrocosmic, and microcosmic realities as an integrated ontological whole. Application. Frame laws, education, and spiritual practices to reflect this interconnectivity, rejecting reductionist materialism. Number 17. Pluralist esotericism. Rejecting, re rejecting religious literalism, theophanocracy embraces esoteric and pluralistic spiritual perspective, such as the Corbinian Harmonia Abrahamica. Application. Foster critically based interfaith dialogues by promoting mystical tra traditions rather than exoteric narratives and integrate esoteric insights into public discourse. Number 18. Radical education reform. Current educational paradigms are inadequate. Theophanocracy calls for holistic and radical pedagogical methods. Application. 
develop systems that cultivate creativity, spiritual insight, and ecological awareness, moving away from rote and industrial style education. Number 19, dismantling neoliberal capitalism. Neoliberal capitalism is an anti-Christic anti system that must be dismantled. Application, build alternatives that prioritize communal well-being, ecological stewardship, and spiritual growth over profit.